<laughs> so welcome to the new Substance Designer Basics series. Um, we are going to start small today. We're going to just take a quick look around the UI and then we're going to build our own substance library. And this is going to set us up for the next video where we're actually going to start looking at our nodes. And I've been giving it a little bit of thought and what we're going to end, what we're going to build first is going to be a brick wall because of course. Uh, but it's also a material that's actually going to let us do a lot of these basic nodes that I want to look at first. And it'll probably take us, you know, three or four videos. And e in each one of these videos, we're going to concentrate on a specific node, and then people can use it as a reference for the nodes. And by the end of, you know, the mini series, we'll have a small material. So let's get going. Okay, so here we are. We've opened up Substance Designer for the first time, and this is what we see. Well, it may not be exactly what you see because I've adjusted these views the way I want them, and they are customizable. You can um, undock the window and move it around. You can change its position. I'm going to put it back the way I had it, and customize the view the way you want it. Also up here, is you know your standard menu so we have you know new substance which we're going to do in just a second uh, we can edit our preferences and this we're going to come back to later on when we set up our library uh, we have our various tools here and here we have our windows and we can turn windows on and off definitely want the graph but you know like you usually aren't going to want your dependency manager that's something you turn on and off as you need it and we're not going to need this for some time yet. That's all pretty standard stuff. Now, the graph. This, this is the main area where you're going to work. And in reality, there are two different kinds of graphs in Substance. We have the main material graphs where you make your material. But then there will also be subsidiary graphs within it. For example, inside the nodes, if you're doing procedural stuff and functions, each one of those functions, it's also going to have its own graph. And again, that's, that's a bit more advanced. And for now, we're just going to deal with this main graph. Just quickly, in this window up here, we have the library, which again, this is the um, library that's native to Substance. And there are a lot of really great things in here, which we're going to be using. And they're grouped by types. So we have function nodes, and this is for all our functions, and they wouldn't work in this main graph. They only work in function graphs. And we have atomic nodes, which are the ones that work on the main graph. And then what we're also going to learn how to do is to make our own library so we can actually start to store things in here and then be able to just drag and drop them into materials that we make. So we can make like snippets, or other materials and start to combine them all. And they're all easily available in our library here. Okay, let's make our first substance. We're gonna go up to File, New Substance, and we get this dialog window. In this tab here, we have our graph templates. And all these are, are just templates that will pre-populate the material graph when we make a new file. And Generally speaking, I'm going to use either this one or this one. And you'll see that as I click through these here in the graph outputs, it's telling me the channels that are going to get pre-populated. And this here is just a description of what it is. Our graph name, let's call it first graph. And we're going to leave the size mode as relative to parent. And this is going to allow it to scale up and down. And we're going to leave the rest of this um, default right now and we'll take a look at the parenting size once we're in the graph and here it is it's opened it up according to what we set in that menu we have these output nodes that it's created for us these windows now have some stuff in them because it's not completely empty and we'll take a look at that in a minute our explorer now has our package which we haven't saved yet 
and this graph that we made. Now, a package can have more than one graph. And if I'm right-clicking on the package itself, I can make a new graph here. You can make a little function that acts like a snippet that you can keep putting into uh, larger stuff that you're building inside the graph. You can also, once we build the library, you can also have access to any standalone functions that you make here in other materials that you make. We can also change the shape of the object that we have in our 3D view. And once we've linked a 3D mesh, we can also look at it in the viewer as well, which will allow us to look at our material directly on a mesh rather than on a cube. And we'll go over all of that in more detail as we get to it. This is just a quick overview of the, the graph, so you know, don't sweat it. Uh, the other thing that we can do, since we're in the 3D view, let's take a look. We can actually, in addition to doing you know, what object we have in here, we can also set up the height tessellation and a bunch of other things. So if you want your heights to show, you've got to put a number in here. We can also change the tiling of the material, and we can change, we can edit the lights, we can edit the cameras, we can edit the environment, we can turn this on and off. Now you'll notice every time I click on something, its information is always going to pop up in this window here. And depending on the thing that I click on, all of that, you know, what, what, what happens inside this window is going to change. Okay, let's save this, and we'll call it first graph. So now this is the package name is called first graph, and within it there's a graph called first graph. And for now, that'll be fine. Let's take a look at what's going on up here. This is going to focus in on whatever you've got highlighted. So I had this node highlighted. It's going to focus in on that. If you have nothing highlighted, it'll focus all your thing in here. It'll kind of, you know, focus in on it. This will give you a one to, this will just like fit it into your graph. And some, because sometimes you have like really, really large things and, and this will kind of center it for you. This will just take a, um, a snapshot of your graph. Uh, display it. This is just a you know display. You can turn off the connector names, node sizes, timings. I like them all to be there, so I've got that on. This turns off and on the um, search. Well, it, it's not so much a search as it is um, a highlighting function. It's actually very useful when you've got really big graphs. Uh, it, it gets it gets to be really large and it's hard to find things. And this will let you sort of if I have bitmap set in here, it'll highlight anything that's a bitmap and it'll gray out anything else. Bring what, what other options we have? Okay, blend. So let's bring a blend down in here and this way everything else is grayed out except for the thing that I want to look at. So any blend nodes that I have going on in my graph, I can easily spot them. And this does the same thing only for parameters. And as we create functions, this list will get longer. Right now, these are just the parameters that are native to substance, so they appear. And there's, there are no nodes here that contain any of these functions, so it'll all be grayed out. But we're not going to do functions for a little while yet, so don't worry about that one. Now, here are our atomic nodes, and those are the very same nodes that we see here. And also the very same nodes that if we right-click and go to Add Node, they'll appear here as well. So you have three options of getting at these nodes and well I very rarely use this one but I kind of switch back and forth between the bar up here and right clicking. Oh and the bar up here you can turn off. So you know if, if space is a, is a problem you can just right click and you know, it, it doesn't matter. It's whatever makes you happy. Uh, this is the parenting, this is turns on and off your parenting size toggle. And we could have set this up to automatically do it at 2K, but we can also change it in here. Um, this will add a comment that you can attach to stuff. Uh, you can, again, you can also do it through the nodes. This will add a frame. 
And again, you can do all of that by right clicking. If you have a node out in here and I right click, I can add comment and add a frame. Um, and again, that's just like an information thing. And then we, where were we? We had, yeah, so th this is just some other, you know, the, this toggles on and off. This shows you the kind of noodle you want. So I, if I want square, if I want square noodles or rounded noodles, we can reset our timings. We can clean up our graph here. If I click clean, if I click on clean right now, anything that's not attached to an output is going to disappear. You know, and there's other stuff here, which, you know, it's a little bit more advanced, so we're not really going to talk about it too much right now. Um, yeah, and, and this turns, I, I believe this turns your live thumbnails on and off. And that's it for the menu bar here. Okay, so the main thing I want to talk about today is our library. And this is a wonderful feature that they have in Substance that allows me to link any folder that I have on, you know, my drives to this library. And what it allows me to do is to use things from previous projects. Uh, this is because it's an older, uh, it was created in an older version, so I'm just going to go like that. And what this is doing right now, it's uh, rebuilding all the links, because what these are, these are linked um, to what's going on in the folder and it just changed the version and this is oh yeah this is from a game project I was working on a couple of years ago and it's a uh, like a this weird material and this actually hooks up to the correct node so you can reuse materials that you've created before and adapt them and mask them out and do all kinds of weird things with them all through this library and it's kind of a two-part system the first thing we need to do is to link the actual folders on our drive. And that means we're going to go into Edit, Preferences, and we're going to go to Projects. And there's a lot of other stuff in here. Right now, we're just going to worry about the library. But this Projects tab, this is where you um, can set default folders, etc. And here I have some folders set in. So why don't we go ahead and add a new folder and we're going to go ahead and add this SD basics. Uh, no, we're going to add this UI. This is the one we're actually working on. And this has within it the package we just saved. So I'm going to select that folder and it now appears here. We're going to apply it. We're going to get out of here. And if I now type first in here, we get this first graph that we just saved into that folder. So that's the first part done, but you know, there's a lot of stuff in here and you need to keep it organized. And right now it's just kind of lost in, I mean, it, it's in here somewhere, but there's a lot of stuff in here. And what I want to do is a set up a filter that's going to allow me to, you know, make little subgroups. Now these, subgroups are created, like I said, with a filter, so they're really um, independent of any folders that you might have. So you can have bitmaps, for example, uh, coming out of several different folders, but they're all getting searched uh, using a filter. So let's come up in here and we're going to add a new filter and we can give it a name. So let's call it UI. You can set a project if you have different projects going on here and then we can start filtering it by a bunch of different criteria and you know so it's like I only want things of a certain type this is like a search criteria so it's default is to base name we're gonna set it to URL because I want it to look in a folder and then what I'm gonna do is go into my Explorer I'm gonna pick any, it doesn't matter what file you pick in here, but if you right click on any file within the folder that you want to get the uh, URL for, and then go into properties, this location, you can just copy that. And let's move that. We can come back into here and I'm going to paste it. So all the stuff with the URL that contains 
this path right here currently contains only first graph, but there it is. So we actually have, um, we have it, you know, we've created a new little sort of folder here that we can, anything that's in that folder. So we've created a new little tab here, which will allow us to access all the stuff in that folder super quick. And that's it. That's all it takes to set up a library. And if, for example, we had more stuff in here and we wanted to sort of separate it out by bitmaps, for example, uh, this would give us all the bitmaps, but not, you know, the substance file, which it just got rid of. So that is a general overview of the UI and, you know, how to set up our library. And then the next thing we're going to do in the next video is we're going to start going through these atomic nodes here and we're going to use them to build like simple materials and we're going to concentrate on just one or two nodes per video which will allow us to um you know, to really get to know what's going on with them